Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks once again for joining us for this Wednesday's edition of Alaska Weather, the first day of June, 2022. I'm David Percy, and the first graphic uh, today showing after, well, after a uh, temperature been rising in the 70s to near 80 over the Kenai Peninsula the last couple of days, but that uh, in the afternoon and early evening, morning temperatures, though, have been quite chilly, and again this morning, first of June, Granite there in the Seward Highway down to 27 degrees and Portage at the Visitor Center down to 30 degrees. Still chilly there, Kenai Lake 31 degrees in both Nanilchik and Anchor Point right down to the Frost Point to start the day this morning at 32. All these temperatures uh, by early afternoon rising well into the mid to upper 70s. Granite for example probably topping out 80, 81 this afternoon. So quite a range, diurnal range in temperatures going on due to the very dry air mass. Of course, that's resulting in the higher fire dangers. Breakup map, uh, not much different from today. Still got uh, breakup underway along the North Slope rivers and breakup is finished from the Brooks Range southward. So going on to fire danger for grass, uh, quite an extensive area of very high danger. Uh, south of the Brooks Range actually extends into the No Attack Valley and uh, down right down to the Alaska Range, the Sitna Valley, Kenai Peninsula, Copper River Basin, down into Bristol Bay, even Kodiak Island there, and down toward uh, Pilot Point, seeing some very high fire danger. This is due to, this is uh, for grass. And also the Northern Panhandle there has some very high fire danger for grass. And then moving on to fire danger for spruce, you can see the uh, area there between the grass and spruce uh, becomes less uh, prevalent, uh, but still extreme fire danger up over the Yukon Flats, Porcupine River, and down the Yukon River, and the central interior areas, extreme fire danger for, again, spruce, the Sitna Valley, and to a much lesser extent over uh, the Cook Inlet area, Kenai Peninsula, Manuska Valley, some areas there, but a bigger area over northeast Bristol Bay of extreme fire danger, and uh, Moving on to hazardous weather graphic. Still have the flood advisory out uh, for the remainder of this week and through the weekend until Monday for the, North, for the Copper River Basin. Got minor flooding going on uh, around uh, Lake Louise Road and on the Gulcana River with some little bit of uh, erosion due to the continuing bankful levels of the river there, so in some cases over bankful. But that's about it. And again, that's out for the remainder of the week until uh, next Monday. And for satellite imagery, you can see a disturbance that uh, tracked northeastward out of the northern Bering Sea yesterday and overnight moving across the Seward Peninsula, now up over the north central part of the state and the central Brooks Range, bringing some uh, soaking rains actually to some areas. Uh, no attack had a quarter of an inch of rain in the last 24 hours, and uh, Box River about the same quarter of an inch. Uh, Co uh, Kobuk had two tenths of an inch serpentine on the Seward Peninsula. They picked up about a tenth of an inch. That's good for a soaking rain. Tenth of an inch of precipitation in uh, 24 hours is considered a soaking or a wetting rain. Soaking rain is a half inch of precipitation. That occurred at ADAC with that strong weather front uh, pushing into the western Aleutians and uh, actually pushing into the central Aleutians. Winds not as strong as yesterday, still gusting about 40 miles an hour at ADAC, but down from that 55 mile per hour wind gust peak they had at Chimia. Today out over the western Aleutian area seeing gusts of 30 to 40 miles an hour. Again, ADAC up to 40 miles an hour, while ATCA seeing gusts of 35 miles an hour. And also uh, pretty windy conditions. Nikolsky seeing winds gust to 35 miles an hour, but much lighter to the east and north as you pull away from that frontal boundary. On the uh, imagery here, you can see the mass of clouds with a system up over the northern part of the state and then a, a cold front actually coming onto the uh, coast of the uh, Arctic coast there. 
uh, with much drier air falling in behind that. Otherwise, it's mid and high level clouds uh, from the upper Yukon Valley area extending southwestward into the uh, Kuskokwim Delta and Bay area. Lots of sunshine, warm temperatures again, much of interior Alaska, uh, well into the 70s by noontime from the uh, Tanana Valley all the way down into the Kenai Peninsula, Bristol Bay area. Uh, still some clouds over uh, Kodiak Island, but temperatures warmer today, less in the way of low clouds than there was yesterday morning. So had some low clouds in Cook Inlet early on, but those are moving out uh, quicker than they did yesterday and uh, probably won't return tonight to the extent they have. Otherwise, you can see a weakening front off the southeast coast there caught up in east-southeast flow, so really not making much progress into the area there, mostly pushing off to the east over the Queen Charlotte's and into Vancouver Island. On the chart today, you can see the uh, trough swinging northeastward there with trailing area of precipitation extending from the Seward Peninsula northeastward across the Kobuk, Koyukuk Valley, central eastern Brooks Range, eastern North Slope, very light amounts north of the Brooks Range there, just a few hundredths of an inch of most recorded uh, over the North Slope to the Eastern Arctic coastal areas there. Some scattered thunderstorm activity breaking out this afternoon with a little warmer temperatures, but mostly sunny uh, from the Yukon River all the way down to the North Gulf Coast, Kodiak Island, uh, mostly sunny on the Shelikoff Strait side, kind of a mid-level overcast at Kodiak State Airport carrying overcast skies at 10,000 feet, so not too bad there. Light winds, light winds over the Panhandle, mostly sunny in the north, a few more clouds down to the south. Then that front uh, weakening as it pushes eastward to about ADAC, just right on the front there, just in advance, as I mentioned, the 40 mile an hour wind gusts with rain starting to push as far east as Nikolsky, and otherwise low clouds and fog areas of over the eastern northern Bering Sea through the Bering Strait areas. And the forecast for tonight, high pressure right over Bristol Bay, another high over St. Lawrence Island, keeps winds light, conditions dry, low clouds and fog along the coast, pushing in toward the coastline later tonight, same thing for Bristol Bay. Otherwise that front uh, pushes a little more widespread, or a little more continuous light rain or drizzle into the Fox Islands in, and small craft advisory level winds for Unimac Island to about Atka, but that entire frontal boundary weakening slowly and maybe a few showers might sneak on up to southern Prince of Wales Island from Dixon Entrance and the Queen Charlotte associated with that front to the south of the Queen Charlotte's and still some shower activity over the central and eastern Brooks Range, eastern North Slope area, but dry over interior Alaska. High, and for tomorrow, temperatures warming back into the uh, 70s and lower 80s over the interior valleys, so that uh, will trigger some shower and thunderstorm activity over the Alaska Range up into the eastern interior areas to the eastern Brooks Range. Otherwise, a uh, light wind, sunny conditions over uh, southern Alaska in the west, a few more clouds for the Brooks Range, areas of fog on the Arctic coast, maybe a few flurries on the western Arctic coast with another very weak disturbance. And uh, that front out west not really moving much, so the northern Bering Sea stays uh, dry with light winds with periods of rain from the Fox Islands to Shimmy and Attu, but winds will be much lighter as the entire system continues to weaken. Chance of showers over the extreme southern southeast coast. And for Friday, Shower chances move northward over the Panhandle, uh, up to possibly Petersburg and Wrangell area, maybe uh, Port Alexander, probably staying south of Sitka, definitely staying south of Juneau, mostly sunny for the northern southeast coast. North Gulf Coast, another day on Friday, much like Thursday, very warm temperatures, scattered thunderstorm activity along the central and eastern Alaska range, up in across the Glacier Mountains to maybe Eagle, in the upper, or along the Yukon River there, otherwise dry and light wind conditions. And that front finally makes a jog to the east to the Fox Islands will be so weak, precipitation will be quite light, and the wind's not really a factor with all at all. Lows tonight, mid-20s to mid-30s from the North Slope and the Arctic Coast, 40s to lower 50s over the remainder of interior Alaska, including the Panhandle, mid to upper 30s over the Bering Sea, upper 30s to lower 40s for the Aleutians, and the highs tomorrow, 70 to 82 for the interior valleys. Uh, you can see the 70s to lower 80s for Bristol Bay. Same thing for the Susitna Valley. And those temperatures, uh, Skagway forecast high, 85 degrees, 83 forecast high in Juneau. Otherwise, a very warm day in store for Thursday for the southeast coast. 
That will be followed by lows in the 40s to lower 50s for the Panhandle, 40s to lower 50s, interior Alaska south of the Brooks Range, in the Brooks Range, upper 30s, and then upper 20s to lower 30s for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast, lower 40s out over the uh, Alaska, uh, out over the Aleutians, 45 to 50 for the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, and Kodiak Island, near 40 for the Pribilofs, and lower 30s, St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait Coast. And then the highs on Friday, back into the 80 to 85 degree range for the northern panhandle, otherwise 70 to 75 down to the south, and uh, 70s to lower 80s again, or 70 to 83 for the Kenai Peninsula to sit in the Manuska Valley near 80 in the Copper River Basin, and 75 to 80 for the Tanana Valley all the way down into Bristol Bay, and lower 60s for the Brooks Range. In fact, could see some lower to mid 60s on the north slope, but we may add airfield for example, warmer on the Arctic coast, mid to upper 30s for the highs with lower 40s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. R for the eastern north slope and Arctic coast uh, to start the day Thursday, marginal VFR back across the north slope to the western Arctic coast, and widespread IFR, Bering Strait south across St. Lawrence Island, Pribilof, St. Matthew Island, and from Unmak Island westward to the Commodorskis, marginal VFR on Alaska Island, Alaska Peninsula, and southern Kodiak Island there, some marginal VFR, but generally Kodiak will be VFR as well as Bristol Bay, areas south of the Brooks Range to the North Gulf Coast, VFR, Panhandle VFR, except marginal VFR from Port Alexander down along the uh, coast of Prince of Wales Island. And for the afternoon, Marginal VFR just barely along the eastern and central Arctic coast, so looking good up uh, that way. Good VFR, western Arctic coast, north slope, all the way through interior Alaska, again down into the Gulf, uh, Kodiak Island. Although some uh, IFR there slipping on up to Sitkanak Island, and then pushing eastward, we've got IFR in the form of low clouds, fog, near, mostly off just off the coast of the central and south uh, panhandle there with marginal VFR across uh, southern Prince of Wales Island, Dixon Entrance, possibly reaching uh, Metlakatla, maybe Ketchikan. Otherwise, uh, IFR holds no change out over the Bering Sea with uh, Nunavak Island now in the VFR zone as well as Bristol Bay. All the Aleutians, IFR, and uh, either side of the Alaska Peninsula. And then for the Friday morning time frame, not a lot of change. Uh, maybe some IFR in the central Arctic coast there, maybe not. And marginal VFR a little more likely along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Otherwise, good VFR. North Slope down to Bristol Bay, Gulf of Alaska, northern Kodiak Island. Again, Sitkanak, possible IFR, low clouds and fog there. With that area extending eastward, now a little more widespread farther up the coastline, maybe Sitkanak and the coastal areas of Prince of Wales Island, IFR. Marginal VFR uh, pushing in, kind of increasing over the southern inside waters to Dixon Entrance. IFR, solid IFR for the Aleutians and Bering Sea. And then for the afternoon, <clears throat> inland areas of St. Lawrence Island becoming VFR. Otherwise, lots of low clouds and fog along the coastline of the island. That'll same story for the Pribilofs IFR, Aleutians IFR, Central and Southwest Bering Sea IFR. Good VFR, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, all of interior Alaska, including the Arctic coast, North Slope, uh, Southern Panhandle though, IFR, Dixon Entrance, up to Heidelberg, over to Metlakatla area, marginal VFR a little farther to the north to Port Alexander, and uh, possibly Craig Klawak over towards Stewart. And for passes, Anatuvik, marginal VFR at times, possible IFR on the north entrance of both Anatovic and Adigan tomorrow, otherwise marginal, better out the south entrance. Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR. Another VFR day for rainy and another VFR day for windy. Isabel, VFR once again. Mentasta looking good, VFR flying. And Tanita, VFR. Portage, chalk another VFR day up there on either entrance. Uh, Sealand's visibility is unlimited. And for Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels along the central Arctic coast, 2,000 feet, warming to 6,000 feet uh, along and just south of the Brooks Range, 8,000 feet over the southeast interior, extending into the Cuscombe Valley and the Panhandle. Eastern Aleutians, 8,000 feet, chilling off to about 4,000 over the western Aleutians behind that front, which uh, weakening will bring uh, isolated moderate rime icing 
to Atka, eastward to the Fox Islands, but staying southwest of the Pribilofs, but lifting north of the western Aleutians. And uh, possibility of some uh, icing, light icing there between two to 9,000 feet with those weak disturbances over the eastern Arctic coast, north slope area. And mostly icing with that southern system, they're staying south of the Panhandle, just maybe grazing Prince of Wales Island, southern Prince of Wales Island. And for the jet stream, Westerly is 20 knots, eastern Arctic coast and around Cape Lisbon. Otherwise, south southeast, uh, 30 35 knots, eastern Aleutians and into the central Bering Sea, 9,000 feet. 35 to 40 knots, southeast winds over the central southern Bering Sea across the Alaska Peninsula and the southern Panhandle, a little breezy there, but light winds for the southeast coast at 3,000 feet. Arctic coast, uh, 20 to 25 knot winds, east 25 Kodiak, 55 to 60 knots for the west central Aleutians. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop for the Fox Islands westward to uh, Atka Island and uh, near the Perbolofs, light to ice and moderate chop Kodiak Island and the central Arctic coast. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, joined once again by the science liaison of Gina Eric Stevens. Gina, of course, is the Geographic Information Network of Alaska based up at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And Gina is all about satellites, and Eric mm -hmm. is always here to tell some really cool stuff about satellites. Now, the last time you were here, we talked mm -hmm. about how the weather satellites can see clouds and what's under the clouds, but you're telling me that satellites can do a lot more, even protect the, uh, the general public uh, with uh, aviation safety information. That's right. There's one particular aspect of satellites we're going to mm -hmm. talk about today that might not be immediately obvious, and that is detecting things in the atmosphere mm -hmm. that are not clouds, that are not snow, not rain, huh. but rather a hazard that can happen here in Alaska, and that is volcanic ash. Ah, of course. When okay. a volcano goes off, puts ash in the air, this is of course a hazard to the public if the ash were to fall on the ground in, in accumulating amounts. Sure. Additionally, while the ash is in the air, and this is the more frequent hazard, is it's a hazard to aviation mm -hmm. because you cannot fly an airplane into volcanic ash without, without great risk. Worst case scenario, the ash gets into a jet engine, right. wrecks the engine, kills the engine, mm -hmm. and now you have an airplane flying with no engines. Right. It won't fly for long. So aviators need to avoid that ash how do you avoid the ash? You have to know where it is mm -hmm. by identifying it with a satellite image and perhaps predicting then where the ash will flow with the overall weather patterns. Satellites are so important for identifying when a volcano goes off mm -hmm. and then tracking the ash after the, the volcano injects the ash into the atmosphere. Now, are you talking about seeing the heat signature or a huge volcanic plume with a cloud that we're used to seeing in the really pretty pictures of, of any Alaska volcano that's erupted recently, Redoubt, for example? Or are mm -hmm. we talking about the really fine details? Because this well, is polar orbiting satellites, the ones that are very low to the ground, right? Mm -hmm. The, the geostationary satellites can do some detection. The polar orbiters, like you say, they're mm -hmm. closer to the Earth. They mm -hmm. give the even better view. In answer to your question, mm -hmm. I would say all of the above. Oh, okay. A heat cool. signature from a volcano going off with all the, the heat that comes um, with the eruption, that mm -hmm. can be identified in infrared imagery. Okay. We've got images from the Kamchatka Peninsula. That's, that's the far eastern part of Russia mm -hmm. on the western side of the Bering Sea, loaded with volcanoes. Right. You know, Alaska has plenty of volcanoes of its own. We can also be affected when a, a volcano goes off in Kamchatka, say, mm -hmm. and then the weather carries that ash toward Alaska from the west. Right. You can see the, the infrared heat signature, like you say. Okay. Also, um, the ash in the air can be detected by doing some sophisticated uh, channel differencing within the satellite data. You can find the, uh, the identification of sulfur dioxide, say, that's a component of the volcanic okay. emission, mm -hmm. and you can trace this um, with the satellite imagery. Um, sometimes volcanoes go off that haven't gone off before, mm -hmm. and we're not expecting them to go off. Say if there's no seismometers around a given volcano that hasn't gone off in 100 years, you might not be expecting it to go off in the satellite imagery. Since satellites can be uh -huh. globally comprehensive, that might be the first sign that you have that a volcano oh, wow. in an unexpected area is going off. That's a good backup system, okay. Right, wow. right, and, and people are working all the time on automating the, uh, the interrogation of satellite data by computers mm -hmm. to provide a, a first alert to a human to, so the software will say, we think this might be important human, go take a closer look, because right. the people are still the best way to, to interrogate the imagery, but the planet's a big place, and yes. we can't be looking everywhere all the time, so the software helps give a first, first cut. And then in Alaska, there's a special 
kind of surprise angle where the satellites are helpful, and that is um, the Katmai eruption mm -hmm. of 1912. Um, huge eruption. There is still somewhat of a moonscape out there in southwest right. Alaska where all this ash is laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a, a strong weather pattern comes along where we have roaring northwest winds that go across the Alaska Peninsula there and can actually pick some of this ash up right. off the ground. No volcano is going off. This was more than 100 years ago that that volcano actually yeah. blew. So you're not going to see a heat signature like we were discussing. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be no seismic signature of a volcano going off. So those data sets, they'll say, oh, no right. problem. Mm -hmm. But you can see in some of the satellite imagery this ash, as it's called, resuspended. Right. When the, the wind comes along, picks it up, the ash can be lofted a few thousand feet in the air just okay. with the wind. And an airplane flying into that plume is, is exposed to some danger. So we need to track right. that ash to provide guidance to aviators that you don't want to be flying here at these elevations in this area. We've got some imagery of the resuspension. And you can mm -hmm. see the wind blowing strongly from the northwest, picking up the ash and, and blowing it down to the southeast. Right. And so that's another, perhaps not immediately obvious, hazard of volcanic ash. It, Katmai is the gift that keeps on giving, <laughs> for sure. Very good. So we've got satellites that, that can help us understand the weather uh, from the past and the immediate past. And we talked last time about how that's feeding into the forecast modeling to help improve mm -hmm. predictions. But mm -hmm. now they're also protecting the general public with aviation sensitive information and watching volcanoes, whether they're erupting or maybe have erupted in the past and finding the, the left behinds from, from those uh, volcanic events there. So really impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. Eric, thanks so much for joining us again today. And uh, you're a gift that keeps on giving from the satellite community. So <laughs> thanks a lot. And we hope to have you back again soon. Again, Eric Stevens with Gina at the University of Alaska. Fairbanks. And if you'd like to check out any of the information that uh, Eric has shared with us again today, you can do that very easily by going to www.gina.alaska.edu. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back uh, for the inside waters tomorrow of the Panhandle. Variable winds, 5 to 10 knots with slight seas. Outside waters, pretty light winds as well. South coast, west, northwest at 10 knots. And the north coast, northwest, 10 knots, seas 5 to 6 feet. And for the day on Friday, changing direction but staying light. South winds 10 to 15, southeast winds 10 to 15 knots on the south coast. North coast, south to southeast at about 10 knots. Seas running four feet. And for the northern and central inside water, Stevens Passage, uh, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay areas, southeast winds 10 knots. Clarence Strait, winds will be south at 10 knots. Prince William Sound, variable winds 10 knots, seas two feet. North Gulf Coast, variable winds at 10 knots, seas four feet. Barren Islands, variable winds, 10 knots, seas 4 feet. Kamishak Bay, variable winds at 10 knots, seas 3 feet. Cook Inlet, variable winds, 10 knots, seas 2 feet. Light winds continue into Friday as well for all these zones. Cook Inlet will go west at 10 knots and variable at 10 knots for uh, the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay and the North Gulf Coast with seas running 2 to 4 feet. Prince William Sound, northwest, 10 knots, seas 2 feet. Kodiak Island for Thursday, variable winds, 10 knots, seas 1 to 4 feet. Alaska Peninsula, Pacific side, east winds 15 knots. Bering Sea side, variable winds at 10 knots. Bristol Bay, variable winds at 10 knots with seas at 1 foot. For Friday, Kodiak Island, west winds 15 knots, seas 4 feet. Alaska Peninsula, variable winds at 10 knots. And for Bristol Bay, a southwest breeze at 15 knots, seas up to 2 feet. On Alaska Island for Thursday, east winds 20 knots, sea 7 feet. Unimak Island, small craft advisories, east southeast winds 25 knots, seas 8 to 10 feet. And for Adak and Atka, south to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots. Amchitka Island, southeast winds 20 knots. Small craft advisories from Shimia to Kiska for northeast winds at 30 knots. For Friday, Shimia to Kiska, north winds at 20 knots, Amchitka Island northeast at 15, Adak and Atka, east winds 15 knots, and for the Fox Islands, east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots with three to seven foot seas. St. Paul and St. George Island for tomorrow, east winds 15 knots, St. Matthew Island northeast at 20 knots, St. Lawrence Island northwest at 10 knots, 
In the southwest coast, northeast winds 15 knots, Norton Sound, west winds at 5. And then for Friday, for the southwest coast, north winds 20 knots, seas only 3 feet, prairie locks north 15 and northeast at 20. There for the uh, Northern Bering Sea and St. Matthew Island. For St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound, winds will be north at 10 knots, seas only at about 2 feet. Up along the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, brisk wind advisories tomorrow. West winds kicking up to 25 knots and 20 knot west winds on the central coast. Southeast winds at 10 knots with two foot seas in the ice free waters on the western Arctic coast. And from Wales to Cape, uh, or from Wales to uh, Cape Thompson, south winds 15 knots. Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, south winds at 20 knots. And for the day on Friday, Lighter winds there on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, more variable at about 10 knots. And for the central and west side, west or east winds at 15 knots from Cape Thompson to uh, Cape uh, Beaufort, south winds 15 knots. And from Wales to Cape Thompson, south winds at 10 knots. For tonight, uh, weak disturbance there continues the thunderstorm and shower activity from the central Brooks Range, northern Koyukuk Valley. Northeastward there to the eastern Arctic coast, down to Arctic Village in the eastern Brooks Range, dry over the remainder of the state with light winds and variably cloudy skies, risk of a shower or two over the southern panhandle. Some light rain, fog, and drizzle moves into the Fox Islands as winds diminish over the western central Aleutian areas. And for Thursday, low clouds and fog again, uh, especially Kodiak Island, and maybe to start out the day, southern Cook Inlet, Kamishak, Kachemak Bay areas, but should stay south of the North Gulf Coast. But along the Panhandle, especially to the south, where there's a chance of showers there from Dixon Entrance, southern Prince of Wales Island, maybe to Stewart and Hyder. Otherwise, scattered afternoon thunderstorms, but sunny, warm conditions. 70s, lower 80s for the highs, interior Alaska, cooler and cloudier north of the Brooks Range. And that system continues to weaken just south of the Aleutians there, that front uh, stalled out over Unimac Island for light rain, fog, and drizzle for a couple of days there. Fair over the northern Bering Sea, no change over the interior warm temperatures. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.